Y'all tell us when we're on the clock. I was in um, Arkansas. It's your, tell me to shut up. When you, yeah. you oh. um, they were digging up bones in um, Petty Jean when we were there for spring break. And we got kicked off of some hillbilly's land. We were looking for this bear cave. Yeah, they yes. were like, you want to get arrested? But it was a businessman out of Little Rock, and they found his suit and everything. Oh. And they still don't know what he, I kept thinking about that when I saw him. Really, yeah. So it's like a real legit, and we still don't know like why it. he died out there. Yeah, Jake's a big dead body enthusiast. So. <laughs> Apparently. It's good. A mystery guy. Yeah, you got to be into something. You and and that is how you got started on this. There was such a dig. Yes. Out. So in real life, uh, the part of this movie that is true is that my wife and I rented a house about eight or nine years ago, and we were going to put a garden in our backyard, and so we got to digging. And I found a rusted gun. Uh, there could have been a cap gun. I found a bone. I found license plates. Found a bunch of stuff and I called the LAPD and I told them what I found and they told me it was not their job to dig out somebody else's garbage and if I found a body to call them back. And so I, where our movie gets fictional is I said that to my wife in real life and in the movie the Rosemary Duet's character says don't dig and in real life my wife said let's grab some shovels. <laughs> and so we grabbed a bunch of friends and my wife and I and we spent a good week and a half looking for a dead body. Which in real life, we did not find <laughs> on a bunch more garbage, and the LAPD was correct. And so Joe Swanberg and I, who had done a movie called Drinking Buddies together, wanted to make a, a follow-up type movie, not a sequel, but a follow-up. And so I pitched him this story, and he said, let's use that as the engine and start it and build a romance around that. And did it make your wife uncomfortable at all? Did she ever have any questions as you're putting this together? Like, what are you saying with this? Well, no. Actually, what my wife did have to say was the original pitch that I had for her was the, just the guys on the hill. Uh, and the whole story took place as looking for this body. And I pitched that to her. And Joe and I also co-financed these movies. So I said, this is, you know, I do a TV show, New Girl, where I shoot for eight or nine months, then I've got a few months off. And so on the time off, I've got to decide what projects I'm going to do. So I have to run that by my partner. So I said that, you know, I want to do this. Not only that, I might want to co-finance it. So I pitched the movie, and she said, so what is the wife doing while you're having an existential crisis that involves drinking beer, smoking weed, and digging with your buddies? And I go, I don't know, taking care of the kids somewhere. And she goes, not only do I hate this fucking movie, <laughs> but I hate your character. And so I said, all right. So I told that to Joe. We both started laughing. And we said, we need to create a female character for a wife that she has half the story. We see her journey. So that journey that she and Orlando, that Rosemary, who we cast in Orlando, do, they really wrote that with Joe. The way this movie was written is there was a three-page outline. And so Rosemary, we cast her. We said, what would a woman want to do? This is a fantasy movie. And she was like, yeah, if I could meet him. And he looked like Orlando, I wouldn't be mad. And what if he could? And then Orlando's like, what if I drove a motorcycle? And Joe just kept saying, like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so in terms of my wife, the dynamic of the marriage in the second act, the ins and outs, that's not something that I had a big statement on. The statement I was making was about the search for when you've got a, a question that everyone tells you to stop trying to answer, but you really want to answer it. Sometimes even when you're right in the end, where my character was right, you're wrong because you're alone on a hill. So my wife was just happy that there was a lead female character who had a strong story rather than just taking care of the baby. Got that hook up with Orlando. Yeah, yeah. 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 Much better look at my character. Hi, I that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I read that a lot was um, improv, like the dialogue. Yes. Can you tell us how much of that was? Because I remember a specific scene about uh, cremating the cat. That was really funny. <laughs> how did that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was just, you know, the, uh, Scene is kind of set by Joe. He's like, this is what sort of needs to happen. You know, this scene will lead to this scene. So you're like, okay. You don't want to tame generalize. That's the dangerous part of improvisation. So if people aren't experiencing it, sometimes they try to get jokey, just to like get stuff in there. But with that, it was just like, what is like real normal conversation? And I'm a cat enthusiast in real life. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, it's really it was just something I feel like my character wanted to talk about. Just <laughs> there was no real thought behind it. That was the first thing that I think I said 
in that scene, and that's what Joe used. So I think that made him more real. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of improv in this movie, we didn't have a. If you just dropped a bomb here, dude, I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't touch it. The way the green wire. Yes. <laughs> the, no, no, he, he just wants to yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. The, no, okay. the that's way awesome. that the movie works is, uh, in terms of writing it, we only had a three and a half page outline. Mm -hmm. So there was no script, there was no dialogue. So every actor improvised all their dialogue. But before a scene would start, Joe would tell the actors uh, what was needed in the scene. So there's always somebody who's driving the story, which, in, you know, my side of the story was me and, and Rosemary's, it was her. But everybody else, they were just told kind of, the world that's happening, and then they were just meant to react to that. And your background, both improv. Yeah, both mm -hmm. of Yeah, that's how we actually met. We met yeah. at an improv theater called Improv Olympic in LA. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I'm a mic hog. Um, so when someone like Sam Rockwell comes in, like, is yeah. he a loose cannon, or does he add, or does he have to be reeled in? And please He's, tell me y'all smoked a lot of pop with him, please. We didn't smoke any of it, so unfortunately. The party stuff was all fake. There was obviously there was no coke, no weed. I don't believe <laughs> got bad news for you. I'll piss in a cup, honey. Yeah. <laughs> Take my test. I'm not going down for that. I have truth when you never tried marijuana. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, I smoked a lot of weed when I got home after I was done. And this morning. Yeah. <laughs> so Sam is a wild card. So what Sam brought to this movie was so wild and so good because we knew he had to be like the crazy friend that my character looked up to. But outside of that, he had the freedom to do whatever he wanted. So he created his look and his vibe and this sense of kind of like danger and other than for the rest of us. But that was really all Sam. What about, uh, I know there was probably a short shooting schedule and I've talked to other people who come through Dallas um, about when you've got a really short shooting schedule that you're able to get a lot of higher talent in mm -hmm. because they're in and they're done. Sam worked for two days. Yeah, so like if the cast is ridiculous like there's yeah, so many people right. show up so how was it getting everyone to so get I think movie? a lot of people came on this one because they had seen uh, drinking buddies and or happy Christmas and they wanted to experience a Joe Swamberg movie because as an actor they're really unique things and so it was really easy because you would say to somebody like Mike Perbiglia we need you to play this character who's like the friend of my character teaches with we want him to be funny and lighter um, he's kind of the angel to Sam's devil, and we need you for two days. Yeah. And we don't need you to do press. We don't need you to push it, you know, because it's not uh, – you make a bigger movie. Well, everybody part of doing it is, you know, we're trying to make $100 million with this movie. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> On this movie, we're already good. <laughs> so now it's, like, now it's like we went to Sundance. We're good. It's over. And so any press after that, it's just for the love of the game. It's just we want people to see this movie. But we already made another one. Yeah. Because you're like, well, they're, they're small enough and they're insular enough that you can just do them. Um, and so all those actors, Jenny Slate, Tim Simmons, they shot for two hours. Orlando, I think, was only there for three days. Uh, I only shot eight days. Oh, wow. Rosemary shot seven. It's like... I they, shot 12. How's that <laughs> Because your stuff was so it was so <laughs> He was switching off a craftsman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, Steve also doesn't understand when cameras are around. So when he's in the bathroom, he's like, I'm shooting a model. <laughs> he thinks mirrors are cameras. <laughs> yeah, I will not believe that they're really not. Uh, but so it's real, they're really fun to do. They are the kind of wildest experience I've had as an actor. What about Chris Messina? Like, hello. Yep. I mean, are you going to go any further with that, or just I would just like to say hello. I mean, he's hot, you yeah. know, and so when he hello. went for it, I was like, oh, geez, was not expecting that. So that was his choice. That yeah, that was assuming. <laughs> that was actually when I get a writing credit. The only thing I wrote, and I wrote it on a piece of paper with marker, but it was Christmas scene a penis. <laughs> <laughs> and I get a writing credit for it. Now we we pitched to him. We you know I've been a fan of Chris for years. And I love what he's doing on the Mindy Project. Yeah. I think he is so good on that show. And he and I saw each other at all these Fox events. And we've been trying to find something. And this wasn't enough because it's not enough for he and I could sink our teeth into. But we're like, it's a party night. And what we need is we need when the group of like regular friends leaves and that next group comes, we need somebody in that next group who's just taken it to the next level. That my character, Tim, really doesn't belong with this group anymore. 
Maybe yeah. 10 years ago he could have hung with him. Yeah. But at this point, he is in the wrong place. And so Chris, we were all in a bar, Sam, uh, Chris, Joe, and I talking about this party scene we were going to shoot. And Chris goes, be pretty funny if I uh, took my pants off, whipped my dick out, and jumped in the pool. And we all laughed. We're like, yeah, that would take the nut to the next level. <laughs> if somebody did that at a, a party I was house sitting for, that would be the moment where I'd be like, eh, that's a man's penis. <laughs> And so hashtag that's that right. for the whole movie, that's Christmas scene right. a penis. That's right. That's right. right. Hundred million. And yeah. so we laughed, we had fun with it, and then when we were on set, they were shooting that scene, and you know, all of a sudden Chris went for it. And, you know, really, Joe and I talked about it afterwards because we shot a version without it. Yeah. Because it's not a huge story point, but we're like, it's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two straight dudes. We're like, it adds something that you're watching the movie. You're like. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what Tim is. There you go. He's yeah. trying to keep it cool on this hill, but he's kind of like, what is going on? I think he was also paying tr- I mean, in like the reality, he was doing a lot of drugs. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, I mean, he was boozing a ton. Like, that's right. you make weird decisions. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was actually like that's perfect. Right. I thought so too. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about the improvisation process, how it compares to some of the other things you do. That's right. First of all, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> This is our first round here. We're doing one on one and we said people around. <laughs> you do these one on one, you say something you think is funny and it's quiet, and you're like, God, <laughs> you know, that is yeah. a few times Steve would say something like, that's a money joke, and they would go, Sounds good. What am I getting in trouble here? <laughs> you don't want to see that. In fact, you couldn't see that. <laughs> No trick! <laughs> uh, Sounds like a challenge. That's right. All right, I challenge you. I'm good at failing here. <laughs> Fine, I'm the worst. So, the movie is in, so a lot of movies I have done have a lot of improv in them, but what's different about them, for like New Girl, for example, is we always shoot the script first. And once the script is done, then we open it up. So, on a movie like Jurassic, everything is scripted except for like. When my character and Lauren Lavish's character kiss, um, Colin, the director, wanted that successful and then a failure. So in that, he's like, now I'll open this up. But everything else is so planned. On this, nothing is planned besides the overall story stuff. So we know, in terms of like the party, my character is really excited. He's trying to seem cooler, but he's losing touch with what's cool. And when the going gets tough, he just wants to dig because that's what he's really about. So then how we do the party, it's like some, somebody will say something and a moment will happen, and Joe will heighten that, give a note on it, and then we'll just keep adding to that. So it, it really, it's, they're all improv in a way, or they all have aspects of improv, but you know, these are, this one is next level. Does that affect, are you just, you know, are you rolling more than normal? Are you, you know, cutting and continuing? Is that Good question. So this, well, this is shot on film. So that's oh. another thing that's different. It's a small budget indie shot on film. So we can't just keep rolling because we just don't have the money for the film. So you kind of get about three takes. So what you do is you do a blocking rehearsal where you're actually doing the scene. And then Joe will go, the whole first half, cut that out. Start this when you say that one thing. And then in there, don't say that. Go with what you did. Go somewhere in there, but it's got to be fast. And then he'll go, this whole scene has to be about 30 seconds. And it ends when you said that line. So end somewhere there. Everything is 30 seconds. Then you do it once on film, and that's your first draft. Then you get notes on it, and you repeat that scene the second time, and the third one, you better have nailed it. How many times did y'all do the, if you don't want to dig, let's get hookers line? They did that once. Once? Yeah. That was great. That was not planned at all. That was supposed to be, we were all digging, and then Mike and Sam just took the initiative and did that line. I swear this will be my last one. Was there an oh shit moment? when the Ben Affleck, Jennifer Garner story came out about the taking the nanny on the trip, um, flying off to wherever they were, and to go along with, oh, yeah. I didn't hear the Ben Affleck story, so no. <laughs> I don't know what that is either, but let's say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was a huge event. You were beside yourself. Yes. <laughs> That's terrible. No, okay. I, I didn't that I didn't follow that. It, it, yeah. No. Seriously, y'all are, are y'all are just being coy. 
No, I don't. I am so out of touch with like Hollywood news. No, fucking hell. Yeah. Okay, no, that's yeah. that's great. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. And, like and uh, little Jude Swanberg obviously Incredible was a idea. stealer of every single scene. Oh, that's right. Unbelievably cute kid. Yeah, he's very, he, you know, acting with him is really refreshing because his dad's not raising him as like a child actor. I've worked with little kid actors, and some of them are very good, some of them are terrifying. <laughs> and the reason I say they're terrifying is I'm not a classically trained actor, so I'm not technically perfect in that. You can say the line, and maybe I'll say it a little different the next time. If my mark is here, sometimes I'm here, sometimes a little here, but I'm always close enough to camera. Some of these little robot kids are just perfect. Where every single take, they'll like smile in the same place and tilt their head for the all cute moment. And I'm like, but they have these little shark eyes where I'm like, you're only six, but you're dead inside. <laughs> and I'm like, good for you, you're very good at this, but I'm like, well, you're gonna pay the price for this young man. I'm like, young lady, you've got some stuff you're gonna deal with. Was the scene where um where you asked him, where he cried? Yes. Was that real? He really 100%. cried? 100%. So, oh. But the way that scene happened, this is what I mean, he's just a kid. Mm -hmm. So in between a scene, like he never has story stuff, so he doesn't have to be there. So right before we shoot, there are a lot of scenes where he's supposed to be in it that he goes, I don't want to do this. And Joe will be like, please, I'll give you gummy bears. And <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes he goes, no. So Joe goes, all right, go play. So now the sun is not in this scene because there's never a scene where we need the sun. Jude's never going to walk in and be like, I discovered a shoe that you need for the second act. <laughs> you know, we'll never do that. So that scene in particular, it was that scene was about, I'm not paying the taxes and it's time for my character to get more serious. And Rosemary's character is getting sick of me slacking off. The way they wanted to shoot it was they wanted to do it with no edits as a wonder. And they had it on a dolly track. So they wanted to move like this. And then when it lands... By that moment of the conversation, Rosemary's like, get it done. And I go, fine. So we blocked it in rehearsal. We figured out the timing. It's about 30 seconds, 35 seconds total. So we all knew the pacing. Right before we started, Joe said to me, Jude finds nothing funnier these days than the word poopy. <laughs> so just say it as many times as you want. Get them laughing. Rose's going to get on you with taxes, but just make Jude laugh. And I was like, you got it, man. He whispered to Roe, but I didn't hear where he said, this is not a moment where you want Tim goofing around. You're sick of him. You're sick of the fact that he won't just do what you've asked him to do that he wants to do. You've got to do the taxes. And he said he was going to do it. So him goofing around is not charming at all. But I didn't hear that. And she didn't hear what I heard. So on action, I know we have 35 seconds. So I go to Jude and I go, do you take a poopy today, buddy? And he like lights up and wants to start laughing. He starts, he goes, I did. <laughs> and he starts going and then Ro goes, now is not the time to talk about that. We're at a dinner table. So I'm thinking, now we're at 15 seconds. The camera's going to land at about 20. I got to get like, Joe wants the laughs. So I go, hmm, Ro's wrong. I was told something different. She doesn't understand what I was told. So I go back to Jude and I go, you sure you didn't take a poopy? He looks at me with utter confusion that I didn't realize what was happening, where he wants to tell me about cats and dogs pooling outside, but he doesn't know how to do it without getting in trouble from Ro. And so he looks and then starts crying. Ro and I freak out because there's a little kid with an honest reaction. So we say, like, go play because his mother is right off camera. So we're basically saying, like, go run to your mom, but we're not, we can't say your mom. Because we're now at like second 25 of the shot, and it ends in 10 seconds. So we're like, go play, go play, we leave. As it lands, and she goes, so you're making me the bad guy. Just finish the taxes. They call the cut, and Joe's like, perfect! <laughs> and I'm like, that's a Joe Swanberg movie, where you know what you have to do. There's a little bit of confusion. There's a little bit of magic. And you have this like, and then Ro and I were thrown. We're like, is Jude okay? And he goes, He's a three and a half year old boy. He cries 500 times a day. <laughs> this one is fine. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's going to be, he, he won't remember this. No, when you look over and he's like eating M&M's. <laughs> got time for one more question? Where, I'm sorry, somebody else can take it. I, I want to ask what, what you have working on, what you're working on anything next. I'm taking, I go back to New Girl in October and I'm taking this rest of the time to be with my family and friends. And he's doing a show called Idiot Sitter. Yep. Coming out on Comedy Central next year with Show at New House and Julian Bell. Yes. So Fantastic. When is that going to start? On January, I think. 
rare than the air. Have you already taped it? Is it good? Yeah, game? it's very funny. Yeah. Very funny. Really. Julian Bell and Charlotte are going to be uh, some pretty powerhouse names coming up. Yeah. I do an episode of it as well. Yeah. So uh, He has a man bun in it. That's all I'll say about that. I roll into a flirtation. Yeah. <laughs> I like your song. <laughs> No. She really uh, good. back to Orlando. Uh, yeah. like, oh, Orlando. Uh, <laughs> Orlando. You can call me anything you want. <laughs> Just keep calling me here. <laughs> <laughs> we get flirty when we're hungry. <laughs> Don't speak for us, dear. <laughs> Jake, you know we do. <laughs> Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.